<clears throat> Alright guys, so we're going to talk about how to compute matrix inverses. So let's take a look at this matrix. Let's call that matrix A. So what we're going to do to find the inverse, we're going to grab that matrix A and we're going to augment it by the identity. So we're going to grab the matrix A, augment by I. And I always like to draw my vertical line so I know where my matrix ends and where my inverse will end up. So we're going to do that. So we're going to augment. So we're going to add the matrix I. So the identity, in this case, 3 by 3. If my matrix were 4 by 4, I would just add the 4 by 4 identity to the right of it. And now I want to do Gaussian elimination as we did in the previous video in the previous few, se few sections. So row 1 uh, so right, row, row 2 minus row 1, I'm going to subtract here to eliminate that 1. And then I'm going to do row 3 minus 2, row 1, to eliminate this 2 from underneath. I'm trying to, I have my, my pivot here, my pivot is this guy, and I want to make zeros below it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have, well, copy the first row. And then I'm going to do 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, negative 2 minus negative 1, so it's negative 2 plus 1, 0 minus 1, negative 1, 1 minus 0, 1, 0 minus 0, 0. Then I'm going to do this minus 2 times 1, which is 0, 1 minus 2 times 1, negative 1. 2 minus 2 times, remember minus negative is plus 2 times 1, so it's 2, two plus 2, 4. And I'm going to do 1 minus, uh, sorry, 0 minus negative 1, 0 minus 1, negative 1, 0 minus 0. And by the way, somebody made a mistake here, it should have been A2, because it's this minus 2 times this, this minus 2 times this is negative 2, sorry about that. 1 minus 0, 1. Alright, so it seems like this is the perfect row for my second row. So I'm going to go ahead and exchange row 2 and row 3 so that I get my pivot to become, or for this number to become my pivot. Of course, then I'm going to turn it into a positive 1. I know when I exchange here, I could just change the sign, but to keep the elementary row operations doing one on each row at a time i'm going to not do that you of course whenever you're solving your problems you can definitely do that um as long as you somehow codify that so i know what happened or your professor in that for that matter and uh, so negative one one zero all right so now i can eliminate this negative by doing negative row 3. And uh, 2. Old row 3, new row 2. Uh, I want to make this pivot equal to 1. So copy everything else. And make this second row negative. And then we continue. Copying the rest of the um, in fact, you know what, this is going to be my next pivot, so might as well change that one as well. So negative row 3. Now, as I said, I'm going to do perform one elementary row operation per row, and so I can change this one as well. So 1, negative 1, 0. Alright, so, so far so good. Uh, we can continue. Now I have uh gotten to my pivots they are all in a diagonal so the matrix is invertible there's no um, non-pivot columns on the left hand side so that means the matrix is invertible and now uh i'm going to start by making zeros above my uh pivot furthest to the right pivot in this case is this one so to do that i'm going to go ahead and say row one plus row three and row 1 uh, plus 4, row 3, row 2, sorry about that. This one I'm going to add 4 to make that 0. 
So I'm going to add one copy of this one to this one, and I'm going to add four copies of this one to this one. So I make zeros above the pivot. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. Again, you're doing uh, one plus zero, one plus zero, nothing happens. Negative one plus one, zero. And then one plus one, two. Zero plus negative one, negative one, and then zero plus zero, zero. And here I'm going to do this plus four this time four times this one so zero one negative four plus four times one is zero as expected and then two plus four times one is six and then zero plus four times negative one is negative four and then negative one plus zero is negative one then copy the last row and the only thing that is left is to eliminate that one in that position for and then I'm going to accomplish that by saying row one minus row two so I can eliminate that one there again working on my pivots from right to left so I don't in, include or I don't introduce any numbers in my already zero positions that's the whole point of the algorithm uh, the Gaussian elimination algorithm so one minus one zero zero minus zero zero uh, 2 minus 6 is going to be negative 4. Negative 1 minus negative is going to be negative 4. Is going to be po uh, negative 1 minus negative 4 is going to be negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. And then 0 minus negative 1 is 1. And then we have 0, 1, 0, 6. Copy the rest. And that would be on what we get on right hand side, it should be our inverse. So how do you check if you did the uh, calculations all right? Oh, where did that? Where did that one come from? My bad. That's a zero. I changed it up. Um, I was copying the la the last row and I put a one there instead of a zero. That would have not. That would have failed my uh, test for the inverse. So how do you test whether something is the inverse or not? You're going to grab your matrix that occur here. That should be a inverse. And I'm going to put it here. So that's going to be a inverse. And I'm going to pre-multiply it or post-multiply it, however you prefer it, times a. And I got to verify that that product is actually 1. So let me copy a all the way from here. And so I guess I didn't need this. So we multiply them and hopefully we get the identity. So when we multiply, we get negative 4 times 1, negative 4 plus 6 is negative 2 minus 1. That's a 1. So far, so good. We should have a 1 and then 0, 0. Let's keep going. Negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2 times negative 2 is 0. Then I'm going to have negative 4 times 2 is going to be negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2 plus 2 times 1 is 2, which is 0. So then we do the next one. 3 times negative 4 is negative 1. Minus negative 1 is plus 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So, so far, so good. Now 3 um, times uh, negative 4 is negative 1. And then we have minus negative. So plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, as we needed. And then we do the next one. It's going to be 3 times 2 6. Minus 4 times 1. So minus 4 is 2. And then minus or plus negative 2, which is also 0. So let's check the last one. The last one, if I do... Um, did I mess up a negative one here? This became negative. Oh, yes, I dropped my negative here. You see, from this right here, I copy the row and I forgot my negative. But that the reason I figure out that I had that problem is when I multiply the first, the first row, I get 1 times negative 1 times 1, 0 plus 0. 0. I needed 0. I was getting a 2. So that I figure out I had a problem. So it's very worthwhile for you to always do that product. The same thing happens here. So 1 plus 1 times negative 1. So 1 minus 1, 0. Plus 0, 0. Then you do 2 minus 1 plus 0. When you multiply like that, you get 2 minus 1 is 1. So we do have the identity and this matrix right here is going to be our inverse. So now that we checked 
hard work and this check will make sure that you don't make uh, silly little mistakes like I did there, for example. So copy that, paste it there. I know it's annoying, you have to rewrite it, um, but that's gonna be then A inverse. So a quick, quick video how to compute the inverse. Now what can happen, how can, the, how can the matrix fail to be invertible? That would happen if, for example, you get, when you're doing your reduced rational form, on the left hand side, you all of a sudden get a column that is not a pivot. If at any point you fail to have any this or this columns to be a pivot, that's it. The matrix is non-invertible. You have to you stop right there. You don't have to get all the way to reduce rational form. You know at that point that your uh, matrix is non-invertible. So you want your pivots all to be on left hand side. You want them to be this guy, so that forces it to be a diagonal. And obviously the non-pivot positions will be here, but of course those are the ones and you need them to be non-pivot so that they can be your uh, A inverse in this case. So the strategy is easy. You put A and the identity, augmenting by the identity. You do uh, your Gaussian elimination to obtain your reduced rational form. And here you should get identity and A inverse on this side. If you don't get the identity, the matrix is non-invertible. So that's real quick how you do it. I uh, hope that helps.